Get in there. Flying in. There's one there. Fantastic. That is really good. Two, one, two. So good morning. That was the uh, that was the cover going back on. That I bought a did my usual trick. Minimum viable product. Bought a pop riveter from Amazon. Was it putting those stainless steel five mil rivets in? <laughs> no, it was not. So uh, not for the first time. Simon across the road came to the rescue with his cordless um, Milwaukee electric riveter, which just put them in like one click absolutely brilliant so that's all on what I was doing on the front spinning that little cut around um, I'd started to rivet the back of it first not realizing when I got around to the front I couldn't get it over the uh, the sample port pipe so I just made the hole a couple of mil bigger diameter so that we could uh, just slide it over rather than drilling the rivets out again at the back uh, anyway that's done it's back in the corner uh, that was actually last weekend this weekend and it's Sunday today but this weekend Yesterday, Elliot and I, uh, down at the brewery, nice and early, got eight casks washed, filled with batch, was it, batch was it, L32? Batch 32 um, of Murgy Strait. Um, and uh, yeah, bit busy day basically. Eight casks cleaned, washed, caustic, filled, um, and then a clean down. Um, and then I popped over to see the guys at Hush for an hour or so because it was their their third brew day on the big kit that they've just bought. So went to witness the chaos there, had a beer with them, um, and that was the day complete. So Sunday, not at the brewery. For too long, I've been using this um, this nice BMW, um, which is a day job vehicle, as and I've been using it as the the Dre basically. Um, you know, and it's all good. It's all good video putting planks of wood and plasterboard and eight casks of beer in the back of it. But it's not safe, really, is it? Um, Chippy T from the Homebrew Forum. Um, he's a constant reminder when I do stupid things in this car. Um, and thank you, <laughs> thank you for reminding me now and again. Um, you know, we've both spent a lot of time driving and on the road over the years, and uh, it's a bit idiotic, really. So. We are going to look at something more appropriate, uh, but I don't know what yet. Might be a little van, might be a pickup, single cab, double cab, not sure. Might be one of each, in which case they both have to be old bangers, but we're going to trade this in against something a little more practical. Um, I've already got a valuation for this, so I know roughly how much equity is in it, which is not a lot. We're probably also going to trade Elliot's car as well at the same time because his PCP deal is coming up for renewal. So um, we should have a bit of combined equity to do something um, so that at least we can all get from A to B. 
So I headed to Northwich first. Um, I've seen a Ford Ranger Wild Track a double cab pickup at Arnold Clark. So we're going to go and take a look at that and just see what we think about the size. So we are in Northwich at TG Holcroft. We just had a chat with Chris at the dealer here and uh, he's shown us around this car slash truck slash pickup and uh, I really like it. Um, just taking a look in the bed at the back, um, I reckon that's at least six or eight at least. So on one layer, potentially with a stacker on and ratchet it down, we get a few more in. So again, we're not going to be moving dozens of kegs in this or casks, but it's a decent size. Um, it is up at, then they've stopped making these now. It's at 26,999 uh, plus the VAT, so it takes it up to 32. Um, the thing that I've just learned is that you can't finance the VAT. So the VAT becomes the deposit. So we need to put basically five grand into this and stick the 28 on the, uh, on the PCP or the finance deal or whatever it is. Um, which is kind of all right, but it's a 2019 with 18,000 miles on. I think it's a bit pricey that, but I've no idea what I'm talking about. I'm basing it on the wild track, the Ford Ranger that we've seen up the road. We're going to go and look at that now. Um, that was 22 with 40,000 miles on, but the same year. But I've got no idea how big the bed is at the back. So we'll go take a look at that. We'll go take a look at that one next. But actually now I've sat in it, they're very car-like. I've never actually driven or been in a pickup, believe it or not. But I'd be quite happy driving that, I think. Multi-purpose. Let's go and have a look at this Ford. So we are now at Evans Halshaw Ford, Northwich. Uh, we just had half an hour with Siraz. Uh, one of the sales team here, really nice guy, very helpful, um, very open, shared a lot of details with us. We've got a bit of a challenge, right? So I, my last X number of cars, five, six cars, have all been BMW. Um, and I, I buy them on a, a PCP deal. So you pay a little deposit, monthly payments for a period, and then there's an optional final payment at the end, which should be roughly what the car's worth at that point. So you're only financing the gap between your deposit and the final payment. And with a BMW, because they hold their value really well, you can get some finance deals where you're paying a lot less per month on a car than you would for other brands where the depreciation's bigger. And unfortunately, that feels like it's the position here with, with Ford. The Ranger, we just looked at a brand new one. I'm not buying brand new. We just looked at a brand new one. Top of the range, about 60 grand. Um, after three years, the re residual value is 20,000. So you're losing 40,000 over a three year period and you've got to finance that 40,000. So what it means is for a car with broadly the same price, this compared with the Ford Ranger, the monthly payment on this is 500 odd quid. The monthly payment on the Ranger is 770 or something. So a few hundred pounds more a month for basically covering the, 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 um, the drop in value, the depreciation over that time. So, it ain't going to be new, that's for sure. Um, there's definitely some used ones around. There aren't many. Um, there is actually a Ford at the next dealer up the road here that they've probably taken as a trade-in. So we're going to take a look at that next. Um, but you know, I don't want to be spending more a month than I'm paying for this. So I think a brand new Ranger is definitely out of the question. And probably a, a reasonably new Ranger is out of the question as well, because we still got that problem with depreciation. So right, let's get up to the next place. Right, so welcome. Welcome, it's probably the wrong word. So, here is the new Four Priests brewery delivery vehicle and day job airport run machine. Um, we can't drive it away today because we've got to still sort out the trade-ins on the other ones, but I've just, uh, I've just paid the deposit, um, a little deposit on it just to take it off sale. Um, it's got a couple of little things need doing on it. There's a very tiny little ding in the door there. Uh, which can be pulled out. Um, there's definitely plenty of tread on the back tyres, but they're not as deep as the front ones, so we're going to need a couple of tyres at some point. And the only other thing is this roll top um, won't roll, so uh, they've, and they were aware of that already, um, so they're going to work out 
uh, how to get that back to functioning again. There's also this little scuff here, which uh, isn't so deep, that'll polish out, I think. They're not gonna do that because it's a commercial vehicle, they don't touch the bodywork, but uh, we'll get Simon across the road to have a little nosy at that as well. Um, so we reckon six or eight casks in the back of that, at a push. Um, we're gonna lose a little bit of bed length because of the roller, but I think the roller on it is, uh, is smart. It's also, unfortunately, and again, we can't measure it, but I think the casks are a little bit higher than the roller. So uh, when we're delivering, we'll have to roll it back and put a cover over or put the casks in sideways um, and, and chock them in. But either way, it's much better than moving them around in the back of an X4. So yeah, very happy with that um, and considerably less expensive a month than the Beamer, uh, but not as luxurious. And we're back. Monday night, it's about half past six, Monday the 20th, and I've just popped in after work to do a few little bits, a few little jobs. Uh, we brewed on Saturday, as I said earlier, I think, um, eight casks of Mergi in this fermenter. I've still got eight casks of Most and Dragon in fermenter two, just slightly out of your view, I think. Um, they're ready to be racked now, just need, I just need to do the crash cool. We can get that packaged and get that one cleaned up, not doing that tonight. We'll do that midweek or maybe even leave it till Saturday. Um, this one's progressing nicely. Up on the magic display, uh, 10, 15, 8, so 10, 16, give or take. So it's not quite done, but another couple of days, get the dry hop in. Um, and the Moston Dragon is currently showing 1.0086, which is a little bit low, but it's, that's probably down to Krausen on the cap of the hydrometer. It sort of knocks the tilt out a degree or so. Um, we'll do the proper hydrometer check once we start to rack it, uh, as I said, probably at the weekend. Uh, main job for tonight is just getting this clean finished. It's all been caustic, all the main crud removed, um, but I didn't give it a final rinse, so we've got a few little tide marks I'm going to get rid of with the pressure washer, and then we'll give it a, give it a little um, sponge down and make it nice and shiny again. Um, so we'll get that done, and then I'll tell you what's coming in the next episode. This is looking good now. I think we're done. I think we're done. A few little bits there. That is nice and clean, ready for next time. Wonderful. Right, I can go home now. Um, so, it has been pointed out my videos end somewhat abruptly. Uh, I'm looking at you, Benny Two Cakes. So, uh, we will finish this video by telling you what's coming up in the next video, which apparently is a far more professional way to do this. So, in the next video, we will be comparing side by side three Murgy Straits. One of mine, and two from subscribers who've sent me their, um, their attempt at the recipe. And uh, These two I've not tasted. I've been sent others that I've tasted. They've always been really good. Um, but the two that I haven't tasted, which are sat in my fridge, are um, Murgy Roach from Pat's Brewery, and Murky Straight with a K, you get it, Murky Straight uh, from Southwest Beer Club. Now, I've had them both for a couple of months in the fridge, so they should have settled out by now. Um, hopefully, I've not left them too long. And what we're going to do, take them to the pub, get them poured discreetly behind the bar where I can't see, and Jack at the King's Lock can't see, and then we're going to taste them blind, and we're going to vote who did the best job. And honestly, we won't know whose is whose. And if mine turns out not to be the best, and there's every chance that, that will be the case, I will hold my hands up and send a little prize to the winner. So that will be probably the next video. Uh, hopefully if we can get time to get to the pub with the bottles and the camera sometime this week, we'll get it filmed and get that up. So that is all for this week, folks. Thank you for watching. See you soon. And you, Benny, take care.